I've previously described how to get a reference to an object's class by using the getClass method. This method is defined in the object class, that's the ultimate superclass of the entire Java class hierarchy, and so it's available in all objects and returns an instance of the class class. Once you have that, you can get the class's name and also references to all of the class's members, such as constructor methods, conventional methods, and fields. I'll describe how to do this with constructor methods. I'm working in a project called TypeInfo. This is similar to previous projects, but it has a couple of changes. First of all, I've added a new enumerator class called Olive Color, and it's going to be used eventually to manage the colors of the olives so that instead of passing in long values, I'll just name the color I want. I'll start back in the main class, and I'll place the cursor after the existing code. My goal is to get a reference to all the constructor methods of this class. I'll move the cursor after the call to the getSimpleName method, and I'll declare a new variable. I'll be using the constructor data type, which is a member of the Reflection API. Just like the class, it uses generic notation with the diamond operator, and also just as with the class, I'm going to say I don't know what the data type is by passing in a question mark. I'm going to be getting back an array of constructor objects. So I'll move the cursor after the diamond operator and add the array notation. Then I'll name this variable constructors. I'll get the reference to the array by calling the class object's getConstructors method. Now, before I show the results of this, I'll go back to the class I'm working with, that's my custom olive class, and show that this class only has a single constructor method, which receives two arguments, an olive name and a color. Going back to main.java, now I'll use a system output, and I'll output the number of constructors. I'll use a label of number of constructors, and then I'll append to that the length of the array. I'll save and run, and it tells me correctly that there's a single constructor method defined in this class. Next, I'll create a reference to the single constructor. I'll define a new variable defined as a constructor, and I'll name it simply con. And I'll get its reference by referring to the object at index 0 of the array. Now I have a constructor method from which I can instantiate a new olive object. I'll add in the basic code and then show you why you need to wrap this in a try-catch block. I'll declare a new variable, and I'm simulating an environment where I'm doing things dynamically, where I don't know the exact data type of what I'm creating. So I'll set the data type of this object as simply object, and I'll give it a name of obj, and I'll set its initial value to null. Now on the next line, I'll instantiate the object by using obj equals con, that's the constructor method, dot new instance. The new instance method takes an arbitrary number of arguments, and it's up to you as the developer to know how many arguments and what kind of data types are required. I know that this particular constructor method requires an olive name, that is one of the options of the olive name enumerator, and a long value for the color. So I'll pass in olive name dot line as my olive name, and then a hex value of 0x00 ff00 as the color. Now you'll notice that there's a warning here, and it tells me that there are unhandled exceptions. When you dynamically instantiate or invoke Java code, you must wrap that code inside a try-catch block or otherwise declare the exception, because there are a number of different exceptions that can result. Now, I'm going to go the easy way. I'll place the cursor above that code. I'll type the word try, then press control space and enter or return, and that creates a try catch block. Then I'll move that code that I had created up into the try block. And then within the try block, after the instantiation, I'll add a little bit of system output and I'll pass in the object itself. In the catch block, I'll use very simple error handling once again using system output, and I'll pass in e.getMessage, the error message that was created. So let's take a look through all this code. 
First, I get a reference to all of the constructors as an array. Then I get a reference to the one constructor at index 0. Then I declare the object and assign it to null initially before the try catch block. I declare it before the try catch block to ensure that I can still reference it after the try catch is completed. Then within the try catch block, I instantiate using the new instance method. And then if I succeed in creating it, I output it with whatever string translation is available with the objects to string method. If I fail and an exception is generated, then I'll output the message. I'll run the code, and there's the result. I get an olive name of pickle line and a color of 65280, which is the integer representation of that long value that I passed in. Now, I've coded this pretty carefully, and I've made sure that I passed in the correct data types for my constructor method. But now I'll show you what happens if you pass in the wrong data type. I'll go back to this version of the olive class, and I'm going to change the data type for the color from long to my enumerator of olive color. I'll change it here in the field declaration, and I'll change it again in the constructor method. I'll also go down here in the toString method, and I'll call the toString method of the color object now. And that will refer back to the toString method of the enumerator class. Now I've created some problems in my main class. I'll come back here and fix those. And right up here, where I'm instantiating the olive class in the first place, I have to replace the long value that I was passing into the constructor method with an option from the olive color enumerator. I'll save my changes and check my problems view to make sure I've cleaned up all the issues. And I'll run the code again. And this time I get an error of argument type mismatch. The reason I'm getting that error is because in the old code, I was assuming that I was passing in a long value. But in the new code, I have to pass in an instance of the enumerator class. But now that I'm using dynamic code, that is dynamic instantiation, the compiler is no longer capable of catching the mismatch, and it has to be handled at runtime. I'll go back to my code, and right here, that's where the problem is, I'll replace that passing of a long value once again to an instance of the olive color enumerator. I'll save my changes and run the code. And now I'm seeing the output of the olive object that I created. So the reflection API gives you enormous capabilities in terms of dynamic instantiation of Java objects and dynamic invocation of Java code. But it also puts greater responsibility on you as the programmer to get the code right. Because Java, when you use it in its conventional form, gives you very strong data typing and catches most type mismatches during compilation. But when you're working dynamically, you have to catch it yourself or interpret and fix the error messages that you see at runtime.